watching Morning at NTV. Hey, good morning to you once again. Thank you so much for watching us here. Morning at NTV, turning on your world. As we kickstart you off today, we want to look at the economic wars that are escalating. Maybe other entities, maybe other brains do have uh, possible solutions, short term, that can help Ugandans actually be able not only to survive but to thrive through this economic crisis. But of course, if we to pick it up from the presidential address that was given on Sunday evening, one of the things that he talked about and referred to as challenges for Uganda over the course of the last three and a half years. One of them was locusts. The other one was the rising waters of the lakes. He also addressed the landslides having been a challenge for the government in the last three and a half years. He referred to the floating islands that were threatening to destroy the power dams and of course the army worms also having been a challenge that the government had to deal with in the last three and a half years. The COVID-19 pandemic is definitely a must, a given topic when you talk about the challenges that the government had to deal with. And of course, the resurgency of the cattle rustling in Karamoja and surrounding areas. Uh, all those, you know, they have done what they can do. But of course, it doesn't negate the fact that we have a new challenge uh, that we desire be handled by the government. And that's the economic crisis, the escalating prices of the food basket. And then you also do have, among others, energy resources also having an increment there. Well, here to disseminate this conversation for us and also reflect into the budget month where we do have the 2022 national budget program that has been released is uh, Francis Chesirinya, who's a deputy executive director with the Private Sector Foundation. Good morning to you, Francis. Uh, good morning. How are you? I'm fine and yourselves. So there's, a, there's an article here in the papers that has recommended uh, from the president's speech, you know, reduce uh, on your expenditures. How are you reducing on your expenditures <laughs> in this economic crisis? Yes, uh, thank you very much. I think, yes, the, the, the president was spot on to advise us to reduce uh, on our expenses. Uh, certainly, I think it is one of the ways we should uh, reduce. Now, for the business community, uh, I think the best way is to look at those expenses that uh, are not raw material, are not distribution, are not marketing. Those things that you can avoid, you can postpone, uh, so that the money you have today, you can best use it uh, to, to, to survive the time was. The second thing is to look at how you fund your investments in this, uh, in, in, in this, cha in these challenges. What is the best source of, inv of uh, financing that you can use? Must you go for that loan, especially if it is expensive during this time? Th uh, uh, these are some of the things that we see the business community must actually do. Also look at uh, um, other things. How do we distribute? How do we get our customers? Uh, can we use online systems more than uh, any other systems so that we are able to reduce on the costs? Okay, mm. all right, thank you so much. And then we're also joined by uh, Honorable uh, Paul Omara, who is uh, reporting to us live on Zoom from Lira. Good morning to you, Honorable. Uh, uh, good morning, uh, Priscilla. Good morning, Honorable Paul. And uh, uh, good morning also to the viewers. Okay. Uh, we want to find out from you, in a, on a personal level, uh, how has it been easy for you to adjust with this economic crisis? Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Priscilla and viewers. Uh, this uh, economic meltdown has uh, affected literally everyone. Uh, as a member of parliament, I, I do not only have responsibility to family, but uh, have responsibility uh, to extended family, friends, and also to constituents. And so therefore, in an environment of uh, high inflation, uh, the uh, purchasing power of everybody is diminished because now you need more shillings uh, to buy the same amount of, com of commodity you were buying previously. Uh, I have just been uh, to the constituency for almost about uh, four, uh, five days, and I've been interacting with people. Uh, you would find that uh, a kilo, I mean, a bar of soap uh, that used to cost about 3,000 uh, went up to 10,000. So basically, you have people with a fixed 
uh, level of income, but now have to buy uh, much fewer goods than they were doing previously. Uh, so uh, personally, I've been affected. I used to put Phil uh, to come to uh, Lira, uh, maybe say uh, 550,000 shillings. Uh, now I'm doing 800,000. And so, so you can see that uh, with a fixed level of income, uh, everyone is affected because of a uh, high increase of prices. Well, thank you so much, Honorable. Back to you, Francis Chisirina here. Uh, what were your expectations from the president when he was coming to you know, address the state regarding the economic crisis? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, what we're expecting is that uh, the president will give us some short-term reliefs, which could help us address uh, some of the, the, the challenges we're facing. Price increases as the biggest, which has actually slowed down uh, the economic activities. You all know, Ugandans, that we recently have learned from the Composite of Business Index that the economy is slowing down on account of increased prices. So as the business community went slows down, you certainly are seeing your customers reducing. And when the customers reduce, it means that you are going to to have less money to go over a number of costs that you incur. So we expected some short-term measures from the uh, What exactly are the short-term measures yes, that you expected? Especially those things that have been a cause of this problem. We expected that the president would uh, say something on the prices of fuel and they pronounce himself on a reduction that we had actually requested some time back of around 100 shillings per liter, which came in in this uh, uh, budget. But that didn't and happen. as a businessman, you do understand his argument, which having been that if we do that, then that means that the budget that you want us to talk about today will be handicapped with that reduction of the 100 shillings on every litre. But I think it is neither here or there, because you get your taxes from the goods that are being sold. Certainly, if we are selling less, because there are less consumers, you may not get that kind of taxes. Uh, this thing, this kind of argument, we've had this similar situation before. And some of these reliefs, relief means something that is short term to address something in the immediate term. We've used it before and it has helped address this. Now the second thing that we expected that the president will uh, do is to also look at the taxes on the crude palm oil, which is affecting two things at the same time. It is affecting the cost of uh, uh, edible oils, but also the cost of, of soaps and st stuff like that. So we are thinking that uh, the, the increase in import duty that was also introduced in the, this year's budget mm -hmm. would be re re removed, the 200 shillings per liter. But this, that, that didn't happen and it was a bit disappointing. Thirdly, we thought that uh, uh, the president would also look at the capacity of the consumers to continue consuming. So if you're not able to give them reliefs, like for instance on, um, uh, on tax reduction that I've mentioned, you give them a boost in incomes. And we're thinking that the best way for every uh, body who is earning would be to increase the pay as you earn threshold to about 400,000 shillings. That means that if you earn up to 400,000 shillings, you, you don't pay any taxes. But today, if you earn up 235,000, you pay? Taxes. Yeah, between 235,000, yeah, you start paying. So if you do that, it, it, meant, it would mean that there could be a little boost in the income of the people, and then they will be able to afford uh, more goods. But we really appreciate uh, that the president came out and guided on a number of things, especially on the frugality perspective and also on the long term uh, the direction that he actually gave the country. Okay, all right. Honorable Paul Omara in Lira, as you're joining us, uh, your comrade here, Francis, has made a very interesting note. He has talked about taxes on the crude palm oil. The expectation was that the president would actually reduce on those taxes. And uh, I know that you run Geta Holdings and you make sunflower oil. We have always assumed that uh, with yeah. such, you'd have self-sufficiency in such times as these. And so production would be ongoing smoothly without any sort of challenge. So how come prices in this particular oil sector are going up? Uh, um, uh, Priscilla and Francis, uh, thank you. 
Uh, as you've said correctly, I have been um, a major participant in the oil seed sector for the last uh, seven years now. And um, on several occasions, even before the crisis came, I've been advocating for us to domesticate oil production in Uganda. I remember in May last year when we went to Changkwanzi, I advocated, we had a robust discussion with the president. And recently as well in, uh, with the Minister of Finance during the budget process, uh, I'm telling you in parliament now, they call me the oil man. But I am happy that I've been vindicated because, uh, you know, as the, uh, also in the report, the power, and that is uh, from his uh, presentation. And this is why we have for a very long time relied on the importation of cooking oil from outside the country. Basically, crude palm coming from Malaysia and Indonesia. And thank God we have been taught, taught a lesson. Now, it... Right, as uh, we get better connection from Honorable Mara there, we continue to have this conversation. Uh, of course, yes, Dr. Bart, domesticating production of this particular oil, crude oil that you have referred to. But then you're looking at uh, the president having also made reference to the fact that because of COVID-19, production did go down simply because there was no demand, you know, so there couldn't be as much supply. So supply, supply had to be reduced. And then in the wake of the new fully opened economy, we get to have the demand coming up, but then when it comes to supply, it was not meeting that very same demand. And then, of course, with all these other the fuel costs that are coming through, it somehow was injected in production, causing then the end product that is coming out on the market or the service uh, to come at an increased price, which is not favorable at such a time as this. So in his reference, he was talking about how productivity, if increased, can actually save us in such a crisis as this as uh, the, from the private sector you know the people who subscribe the entities that subscribe to the private sector foundation uh, what would they say to this particular recommendation from the president i think it's fantastic and we applaud him and uh, to add on to what honor omara has just mentioned we've been advocating for a long time uh, to to for government to try and ensure that we build uh, the availability of local raw materials for our uh, industries. And the government is taking the right direction. The investments that are being made in the palm oil sector, they, they have done some work, a very successful project in, in Sese. Now there is another project that is coming up in, in Chotera and other places, and also boosting the production of sunflower. I think this will make us, uh, to some degree, self-sufficient. But where we are, we do have a, a crisis, my friend. The crisis is prices that have gone up by multiple times, percentages. Now, this is a short-term crisis, and the president got it very well spot on. What caused it? Now, the issue at the moment is what should we do in the immediate term to have some relief so that we can be in position to even be able to do the medium term. Okay, that Francis, is what was Francis the reality of the matter is that the government right now does not have any immediate solutions for you. Yes. The expectation would have been that from the production line that you have made mention of, mm -hmm. some sort of incentives would have been given at least to the industry and the business sector to be able to boost the economy with more supplies so that it can, you know, feed the demand that we are looking at here. Mm -hmm. But then, in the absenteeism of that, how do you get to encourage the business sector to actually continue on and uh, have consideration of the end user without necessarily putting the cost on the end user. Yeah, l let me tell you, uh, Priscilla, the, 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 the issue here is that manufacturing industries, business people are absorbing much more costs than actually they are able to pass on. And they're extending to the them to their consumers? Not all of them, just a portion. Okay. It, it's, it's just a few that you see. For instance, I'll give you a good example. There is an unsaid cost that companies are, 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 are incurring on, for instance, the digital tax stamps. Now, the digital tax stamps, 
we are meant to support and help government collect more excise duty because they felt that there was particularly some leakage. Now they were introduced, but at the cost of the of the of the manufacturers. Mm -hmm. Now these manufacturers are not passing on that cost to the consumers at all. Now, meaning that they are already suffering. Now, when you add on this one, the 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 the, 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 the challenge continues. And the, and the, the other thing that I've mentioned is the reduction in the uh, aggregate demand and the market for the, these products. I think these become uh, significant issues uh, to be considered. So meaning that there should be a way that we can, we can balance it from the government side and also from the private sector side. The, the private sector must be frugal, that's, that's for sure, we must find a way. So government should, meaning that the frugality on both sides could actually create some leeway for a particular relief or incentive that can actually go into uh, supporting the business community. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Thank you so much, uh, Francis, for that. Back to Lira, where we are joined by Honorable Paul Omara. Honorable, why do you make? Uh, what do you make of the argument that cutting taxes would actually ground services of the government that they extend to the citizens? Uh, shouldn't government, for example, be also tightening its own belts of expenditure? Uh, you, you know, uh, Priscilla, I listened to the president. Uh, although he has uh, identified most of the problems correctly, I think it should have gone further in terms of taking some executive action. You know, we collect taxes uh, to, um, uh, you know, to support the budget so that we can do certain things for citizens. But he should should have looked at essential commodities and work on a tax structure, say, for a limited period of time, about three months, so that uh, the vulnerable people, especially those buying soap, buying cooking oil, could actually be salvaged. So having a tax consideration for about three, four months uh, would really not dangerously hurt the economy. I understand I'm a member of the Budget Committee of Parliament, and I understand the, the, the deficit that we have uh, to balance our budget. But here is a situation where we have seen massive suffering as a result of uh, price increases on essential commodities. So uh, if I were closer to him, I would advise him to say, Mr. President, consider uh, a tax uh, uh, adjustments on essential commodities for about three to four months. Within that time, you know, sunflower takes about three months and it will be ready. So this country will have uh, a bulging uh, production of oil seeds and the prices of cooking oil, oil would naturally drop. And also soap is a byproduct of cooking oil. And, and so providing some soft landing for majority of our people is not a bad idea. Uh, and I listened to the president when he was saying, you know, of course, um, on, 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 on uh, you know, tax waivers being very dangerous. Yes, you can't do it for long, but for a limited period of time and on essential commodities is something I would have encouraged him to, uh, to, to consider. And also, secondly, I think somebody has given the president a wrong idea that uh, if you consider tax waivers, uh, you know, we will have a, 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 a foreign currency flight. That's not the economics I know. We don't deplete our, our reserves on account of the country because our reserves are in foreign currency. What we really need to consider are some of the useless items that we spend our dollars on. Uh, for example, getting these uh, useless plastic shoes that we bring into Kampala. We spend dollars on them, uh, you know. Uh, some of the the second-hand uh, underwears and useless stuff, we should actually be considering to say, what items do we spend our hard-earned dollars on? So that, that's the consideration we need to make, especially on depleting treasury. A and also, it's also true that sometimes Bank of Uganda has to use local currency to buy more dollars to, to work on our reserves. So relatively, they will need some shillings to do that. But most of our reserves are a result of exports earnings and also international uh, investors who bring dollars into the country. 
And of course, they will convert and get shillings and put in our bonds and treasury bills. So that, that is the complex economics that uh, we really need to meet with the advisors of the president on how they will say an intervention, uh, a simple intervention of uh, tax adjustments on essential commodities will affect our results. That is a, 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 a debate I'm willing to have any day. So, so my recommendation would have been a limited, targeted intervention in tax considerations for about three months so as to allow our people to adjust. When you don't do that, and one of the things that the president needs to consider is an imbalance, inequality on income, because you, you are basically collecting money. For example, if my mother in the village is going to pay 10,000 shillings on a bar of soap, to whom are you giving that money? What you're doing is you're creating a very big income inequality with the majority being poor and a few people being rich. You see, so, so we need to look at the element of income inequality and the impact of a, a dramatic increases of prices on the vulnerable people. And so a consideration, a, a, a limited targeted consideration in a adjustment of uh, tax uh, yeah. revenue from the government side to ameliorate their condition is something that I would strongly recommend. And then the second one, uh, which is around fuel, we have been talking about regulation. And I agree with the president that taxes on fuel is basically, it's a flat rate. It's 1,300 shillings on a liter of fuel. That is our tax. So whether the prices was 4,300 4, or 4,500, that was the tax. So now when prices now continue to escalate, it's not a result of tax increment. No, the tax on fuel is not a valorem tax. It's a flat rate tax. And therefore, if the importers are necessarily increase prices on fuel, because fuel affects literally all commodities, transport, manufacturing, the final product. So that is a strategic resource where government actually should come with a regulation. We are looking at, you know, for in terms of long term, the Minister of Finance should come with the competition law so that we consider some of these prices. We, we are capable of looking at international prices, uh, uh, you know, the barrel, price per barrel of fuel. And we can work it all down to Uganda and look at what margins are these fuel companies getting. The main uh, uh, importers of fuel into the country are two, are Total Energies and Shell. They do more than 70% of the fuel we use in the country. We can have a conversation with those two oil companies and make sure we, we, we have a control on, on prices of fuel. I am an economist and I advocate for a free market. But there must be strategic resources that the government must have a say. We can't allow uh, some of these strategic resources to be handled nearly willy and it's affecting the majority of our population and making people poor and creating massive income, income inequality. And, and this is why you actually look at the, 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 the money the banks have made. In, in the financial year during COVID. They have made more money than they have ever made in the history of Uganda. Why? You need to ask yourself. In terms of restructuring that they were doing and all other things, they have made more money. These are corporate entities. So you've shifted money from the poor to the corporate rich. And you need to ask yourself how many uh, assets are being foreclosed now from the guys who have done construction on roads, the guys who have made supplies to government, the business people that have borrowed from the banks. But the banks have posted handsome profits in the financial year. But if you go to the business side, guys have made losses and they are on foreclosures. So we can't have a country where there's dramatic imbalance between the poor and the rich. So. Those who are much honorable. The president, mm -hmm. Yes, those who are close advisors should say we cannot allow the vulnerable to continue to suffer 
in a, 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 a economic situation of a meltdown. Yes, we need to protect our tax revenue, but let's do something. My recommendations would be two. One is a limited tax adjustments on essential commodities for about three to four months. Second, a serious regulation. A bill must come to regulate strategic resources, especially fuel, under the competition, uh, competition law. That would be my recommendation as long as, as immediate and long term. Francis, uh, the Honorable has made his recommendations. Regulation mm -hmm. on some of these imports, such as fuel, mm -hmm. and limited tax adjustments for a limited period of time. Yes. But then again, I understand yourself, you have made a presentation that has been put before Parliament on what you think would be best going into the budget. Because we're looking at the financial year 2022-2023 budget projection being 48 billion plus shillings. And that means we're seeing a 70.7.5% 7 trillion. Uh, we're looking at a 7.5 percent increase in this next budget mm -hmm. what are some of those recommendations that you have presented before parliament uh, thank you very much um, as private sector and through consultation with the business community we really made uh, a long list of recommendations uh, but the biggest recommendation we make in, we made in terms of uh, a general recommendation is that we are coming out of covid and therefore government and the budget policy and direction should focus on how to recover the economy. Specifically, our view from the business community is that the biggest challenge to date is the inability to sell what we produce. And we recommended a range of things that can actually help to boost uh, domestic demand in terms of increasing incomes of the population. Uh, and um, I'm very happy to say that Government has is, and is going to invest in uh, the parish development model, in the parishes. So we are going to see uh, people who are outside the economy now uh, participating in the economy. So we expect that to bring in demand. But have, having done that, we also have seen government taking very specific uh, steps to boost value addition in the country. We have seen uh, and we propose to government that please make some reductions on the taxes that hamper the value addition. For instance, in the uh, beverage uh, industries, there were taxes that were uh, um, uh, failing manufacturers from using their facilities optimally. So the reductions that we have seen, for instance, in terms of op opaque beers, are going to be very helpful to the local person. Why? Because these opaque beers are made out of uh, local products, maize, sorghum, cassava, and this will be incomes to the people. Now, when the people get the incomes, they will be able to consume, and then that will boost demand. And the other things have also been done. The second area from a recovery perspective was for us to for instance, the hotel sector, as you know it. The hotel sector had suffered so much from COVID, as you know, because of restrictions and things like that. But along with that, we also are fairly uncompetitive in terms of costs of hotels if you compare uh, the region. So we are happy that the government has removed or has exempted VAT on uh, hotel accommodation. This will help in terms of uh, boosting uh, tourism in the country and help uh, um, the area uh, of tourism and put more money in the in the hands of, of the people. Now, we also urged and they asked government to try to have moves that will help in widening the tax base so that we don't have to concentrate taxes on the few compliant uh, taxpayers. Um, I think that move has come, and one of the areas that uh, seem to be a, a big challenge is the area of, of real estates. We definitely know that if you look at the growth in the construction industry, it is yeah, not... I mean, just in COVID-19, we have seen people actually putting up, putting down old buildings and putting up new buildings. We've yes. seen a lot of escalation as far as the construction sector is concerned. Yeah, but the contribution of, of real estate and construction to, to taxes is so minimal, mm -hmm. meaning that there are so many gaps in there that really create a challenge and they stop people from complying or paying taxes for real estate. Now, we propose that there should be a tax that is 
well, okay, that is not so high, so that to enable people to comply. And I think what government has done is now to create some thresholds. We propose that for people, ordinary persons, the, the houses they stay in, the Muzigo 50,000, 100,000, should not really be charged a tax. And government has done that. Now, when you continue going up, then you can introduce the taxes. So we are seeing the approach that has been taken this time that it will be able to boost the local, pa the ordinary person. In well, that sounds like a good recommendation, Francis. It yes. sounds like you're going to take us back into slum settings. You're going to encourage more people to <laughs> settle for below the tax bar so that they can be able to enjoy their money and uh, invest it in, uh, you know, the construction sector or the real estate sector. But then again, create a whole new set of communities that are below standard, especially in the city center or urban centers. Uh, not at all. The affordable housing, I think, is going to go with the incentives, is going to go with the tax structure that has been created. Now, we are told that people in Uganda, majority afford rooms between 100,000 and 150,000. Now, these are not likely to be shanty rooms. It, it also goes with the physical planning that our local governments must actually do to ensure that much as this area is a good for investment because of the tax structure. We don't now create slums to, to, uh, to, to, to from this. So we think that is going to be helpful uh, from the real estate side. I would the like to problem, bring in uh, the Honorable in, you know, to just f uh, help me understand if from his perspective that would be helpful for the people that he represents. Um, well, Francis recommends that one of the things they should look at in terms of widening the tax base is real estate and uh, coming up with a sort of a taxation that will cause the real estate to contribute uh, to the budget that we are looking at here. Is that something that you would also, you know, stamp as a recommendation? I, I would support that. I'm a member of the Finance Committee of uh, Parliament. Uh, we considered about nine tax bills that was uh, that were presented to us by the Minister of Finance. And one of the considerations was uh, tax on rentals. I, I personally believe that there have been so many mass rooming um, apartments and, and buildings in Kampala for which no tax revenue has been received uh, in a substantial way. You know, if you go to developed countries, the uh, rental is one area where government collects a lot of uh, tax revenue. So we have uh, made recommendations and supported the position of the minister uh, in considering individual uh, rental tax and also the non-individual uh, rental tax. And we have put the rates there it will, it's already in the, in the law, and uh, it will take effect on the 1st of July. So Ugandans who have more money, as I said before, uh, should be able to fox uh, more money uh, for the development of the country for which they love. Uh, and so, therefore, rental tax is, is especially for uh, city areas, uh, is an area which have not been taxed for a very long time. So doing that would basically broaden our tax revenue. Uh, because we have, for a very long time, been collecting money from pay, pay as you earn. So the civil servants and the, a few people in the corporate employment like you, uh, Priscilla, have, uh, you know, shouldered on uh, in, in tax contribution for this country for a very long time. So there is an informal sector that has been hiding away from, from us. So we would want the Uganda Revenue Authority to go in there and collect those revenues. Uh, so that will broaden the tax, tax base, but also will give us the attendant revenue that we need uh, for development purposes. I, I should also add, though, that uh, uh, one lesson that we have learned, and I remember the president was very angry. When, <laughs> hello? Uh, when the president was very angry when we had our money uh, to buy vaccines for COVID. And those people who are manufacturing them told us to wait. In other words, you can die while we treat our own people. And this is basically a simple economics that you, if you don't domesticate production of essential commodities in your country, you will always remain the slave and the fifth columnist 
in the uh, and the permutations when it comes to international trade and for people taking care of them in a crisis like this one uh, now caused by being escalated by war in Ukraine but also when there is a disease like uh, the COVID which came. So the recommendation that France is talking about in terms of supporting our own industry, uh, because if you look right now, Uganda is now self-sufficient self in, in, in sugar. We now are self-sufficient in milk. You, you know, we uh, export coffee. We're one of the largest now. We are selling now 7 million bags of coffee giving us 700 in the last 12 months has given us 790 million dollars now we now need to domesticate the manufacturing of cooking oil where by the way we have enough land in uganda to produce that uh, cooking oil and from which we will have will make soap so we can domesticate the manufacturing of soap let us only look at a few commodities that we have to import as a country and so there must be a determination to identify some of these essential products that we can manufacture from from with, within the country. Well, uh, the back to you, Francis, work. here. While we do have Honorable making that submission, what do you think should be used as stimulators for this economy? Yes, you made the recommendations uh, for widening the tax base. Mm -hmm. There's been recommendations from Honorable Omara in reducing some of these taxes on some of these essential goods here. Mm -hmm. But then again, we still have to ensure that the economy is stimulated and yet it's sliding into depression. Mm -hmm. Where do we go from here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the, the stimulation of the economy uh, uh, will require us to be focused on very specific areas that do that. Manufacturing is one of them. And the manufacturing using the resources we have, the minerals, the agriculture products, that is what will make this economy better. Now, let's focus in that area. And uh, we are seeing moves by government towards that direction, which is a very good The thing. manufacturing you're talking about, Francis, is highly dependent on the fuel, which is still high. So how do you recommend that actually that particular gap be resolved? Yes, true, there is that problem. Now, when you look at it as a package, we will see what do we need to make our manufacturing more competitive. For instance, in the region, we are doing very well, as Honorable Mara is saying. We are self-sufficient now and a surplus in some of the commodities. We can see how to expand these. The president was just saying the other day that for sugar, we are about 700,000 tons, metric tons in a year, but we, co we consume just half. So meaning that we do have potential to actually export and even continue doing value addition beyond that. But the point, as I mentioned, is the specific package of things we have to do, the tax incentives, uh, the how to access money that you, you require to invest here, the markets and what we need to do, that is very important for us to stimulate this economy. In the oil sector, for instance, I'll tell you, is something like of kind of a, a game changer in Uganda. The only challenge that we are facing, and the government made very good laws on involving local people, uh, under the local content in the in the oil sector, the only challenge we are seeing right now is the oil sector is such a capital intensive uh, industry. Now you need to have money, but where is that money that local people can access to also co-invest and participate in the oil sector? So when you package all these things properly, you are able and get the solutions that are needed. You can very quickly have your economy stimulated. And then within a short time, you are a middle-income country. Okay, all right. Francis, finally, uh, what do you see in terms of the budget forthcoming? Do you see the expected objectives coming through in terms of dropping expenditure, production, and high inflation pressure over the next six months? The conflict in Ukraine is definitely sustaining this conversation for every country, yeah. including Uganda. Yeah, I think the biggest risk that uh, this budget, uh, the new budget is facing is are those uncertainties around Ukraine and the increasing prices. Also, the, the recovery across the world uh, from COVID. Of course, demand across the world is going to be very expensive, and we're going to have uh, imported inflation here. Now, how do we as a country be able to sustain our economy going forward? Make, make sure that the inflation is within the 5% limits, but also be able to generate enough money, have business pro do uh, remain profitable and uh, moving 
forward to, uh, we have a sustainable economy. Our, we have two worries as, a, as private sector. One, the budget is uh, big, which is a good thing. But it's funding. It is only half of that budget that we are funding with our own resources. Now, the rest is borrowed money. And uh, on the borrowed money, the biggest component is going to be from the domestic taxes, domestic uh, uh, banks. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, if government is going to borrow 12 trillion in one year from the local commercial banks, what remains for the business community to fund their businesses? There will be a, a, a crowding out mm -hmm. effect from that from the way we see it. The second thing is uh, from the, pers from the, for instance, the, the tax that the, the, the Honorable uh, Omar has indicated on, on real estate that has been, the tax regime that has been introduced, which is a good thing. We are seeing one challenge and concern is that if you are going to tax on gross revenue, okay, what about people who are finan financing construction by mortgages. Okay. Well, we do have the Honorable here to answer that question. Mm -hmm. And as you give us your final statements, uh, Honorable, in reference to fr what Francis has talked about, uh, what we pick from the presidential speech is that there's nothing that can be done. All we have to do is be frugal through this situation. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of the recommendations that the president said was right. Uh, when the, the, there's bad time, you adjust your budget. And uh, some of the what we consider essential commodity, I mean, uh, uh, how do I call it? The commodities for the rich, like bread, <laughs> you really have to find an alternative. We'll go for a mogo. I think and it's natural. That is, in, in, and it's also healthy. Uh, but I think looking at the economy, the macroeconomic stability will be maintained. Uh, inflation is projected at 6% this financial year. Right now, we are on 4.9. And the central bank has been given a target of 5% from which they will start intervening, uh, so, uh, may basically sweeping the excess money with the liquidity within the economy. So the central bank, I'm confident, they will manage this inflation uh, within the targeted macroeconomic level mm -hmm. targets. The second one is we have just approved the budget, uh, a budget, a $48 trillion budget. And... The key areas that we'll be focusing on will be um, uh, human capital development, which is health and uh, education, the, the security, uh, strategic security, we're looking at infrastructure, and also agriculture and parish development model. Uh, we believe that if government works very closely with the private sector, we should be able to manage this economy much better than where we are coming from, uh, to making sure that... Uh, the implementation of the Paris Development Model uh, actually happens. If it doesn't, it will be another disaster in the waiting. So, so private sector working with the community and government uh, should be a model that we must pursue uh, diligently because government basically does not, uh, apart from providing a macroeconomic environment and stability and uh, funding areas in one place or another, private sector should be allowed uh, to lead in the development agenda. Under the Paris model, we should link them to factories so that what the communities will produce will have a ready market uh, within the country and also can be exported. So I am uh, confident that the inflationary environment will basically settle in the next three to four months. And uh, if we produce enough food for ourselves and also produce enough materials for the factories. And let me say this before I finish, is that we have 107 factories producing oil seeds in Uganda, but they are only operating at 20% capacity. So if we are to intervene and provide enough raw materials to the farmers, like we have done in the coffee area, we are going to have enough cooking oil for ourselves. We will not care what is happening in Ukraine or what Malaysia and Indonesia is taking. We'll Thank you so much, Honorable. In the country and we support the East African region. So I'm very confident about where we are going as a country. Okay, all right. Um, I like the, uh, the Honorable's confidence in you know his commitments. He talks about things that uh, are far-fetched because all these are time-bound. It's not like tomorrow you'll have the industries and then the oil, <laughs> crude oil uh, domestication of production will also just happen instantly. All these are time-bound, uh, which time again lies in the hands of those that hold the decisions, make the policies and things like that. But of course, in the wake of the 2022-2023 
financial budget. You get to look at the fact that it's being ushered in amidst rising commodity prices. The recommendations from Honorable Omar are regulation of some of these products that are imported, especially in fuel, limited tax adjustment. Yet on Francis, he's coming through with a recommendation of widening the tax base, especially focusing on real estate in the next financial year. Well, all these are good and um, they're long term, but again, we as Ugandans uh, desire short term solutions that can help us survive through the next morning, the next day, the next week. And that is what we're still demanding for. Well, that's all we've had for you on Kickstart. We get to look at the Africa Liberation Day and here to talk to us about that is the one and only spokesperson of UPDF and that is uh, General Felix Kulaije who's going to be joining us. Thank you so much.